Hey gang, welcome to the TV show show on The Legend of Korra, episode 306 and episode 307, Old Wounds and the First Airbenders. I'm Matt Lieberman. I'm William Haynes. And I'm DJ Wooldridge. Yeah, so excited to have you back on the TV oh, show thanks. show, I'm DJ. I'm excited to do this one. I'm yeah. a big fan of the show. I love this show. I mean, I'm the newbie. Will, what, what are you trying to spirit bend me? Oh, no, I'd never. I could take your bending away, but a good avatar wouldn't do that for no reason. That's <laughs> exactly. true. Who I said would I have was to... a good avatar, though? Oh, what? Will, I... you, watched, you watched The Last Airbender, right? Yes. And you're just Korra. You I'm just, just Korra. Korra. Okay. I've only Ooh, seen you're Korra. missing out, buddy know. boy. I know. You'll well, get back now. to it. He had a lot of catching up to do on yeah, Korra. I know. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just Airbender, need time. Air, uh, Last Airbender is like three seasons, but they're, they're essentially, it's essentially like six seasons of television. So, yeah, because they're yeah, like yeah. 20 episodes long. Yes. I feel like that was my entire childhood. I know you guys are basically adults. That came out when yeah. I was maybe 12. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I was older when it came in. It was one of those rare opportunities where I was, sitting, I was just flipping around board and I stopped on it and I was like, Damn it, this cartoon's amazing. It yeah. is, wasn't it? I'm going to I'm gonna have to justify this to my friends that I watched this. I remember I saw it for the first time on television, and my sister and I thought it was a movie, and we're like, this is going to be the greatest movie of all time. And then we found out that it was the greatest television show of all time, sort of, kind of, yeah. in my opinion, in my humblest opinion. It might for be me. one of the best animated series It's animated, ever. yes, yeah, you're right. I'd the agree Cosby with that. Show is a very great show as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what happened this week? We got we got two episodes. The first one settling mm -hmm. uh, is setting in the Metal City. Yes. Uh, and we got to see the backstory between uh, Lynn Beifong and Woo! her sister. Yep. Um, yeah, and we got to see all, all uh, why do they hate each other? Because because Lynn hates her so much. Mm -hmm. And you find out there's actually a pretty legit reason why that animosity exists. Right. Yeah. She should have let it go years ago, but the foundations for it are solid. Su Yin used to, she was a criminal. Yeah, she was a criminal. She crook. wasn't just like, she tried to pass it off as like, oh, my friends are criminals, I'm just doing them a favor. Nope. Get off my back. No, she's a criminal. Well, I also love that you, present Su Yin is so lovable and likable, mm -hmm. and then you flash back to Su Yin, and you're like, I can do what I want. It's like, oh, you're one of those. And right. she had really nice hair. Even back then, she, she had, had really nice hair. She did have nice hair. She was yeah. slamming. But, you know, here's the thing, right? Some people can't let go of the past, and Lynn is one of those people, and she goes and she gets acupuncture, mm -hmm. and it, acupuncture, I said acupuncture. Which like was a kind jerk. of. Did, did either of you guys have a moment of like, mm, I hope this guy's not a bad guy? <laughs> right? Because he could totally like, shoo, like yeah, zoom you, all those needles they, into they her. And put a lot of detail into like the needles here, and then it goes in. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Oh, that'd be murder, wouldn't it be? Murder, yeah. murder, and black convertibles. Murder. Yeah. Um, but oh, well, what I want to say, interesting thing that I, I don't know if you guys think, oh, well, you may not be no, aware, no. but uh, you know how Toph can, uh, she can feel the ground and like feel for like maybe miles yes. out? I, I don't think other people can do that. Well, here's the thing. the you, in, in Lynn did it in the first season. Oh, she, oh, she did. She would right. stomp yes. the yes. ground yeah. and would send shockwaves everywhere. Well, yeah. and also um, a guy at Metal City who can sense people was lying. Yeah. That was a Toph That's a Toph thing. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the big, because she was blind. Mm -hmm. she, all her other senses were through her earth bending, so she could tell people were lying. Yeah. She's blind? Yeah, Toph is blind. Toph is blind. And she's the chief of police? Yeah, yeah. she's a really good earthbender that she can feel uh, everything. That's really cool. She's a lot cool. like Daredevil for my fellow comic Yeah, oh, okay. kind of like Daredevil. Kind of like Daredevil. Except she um, whooped Daredevil. Yeah, and we got to we got to see Toph this week. A bunch of people really, really happy to see her again. Your senpai, at Hammy Dan, writes, Was I the only one too excited when I saw Mama Toph? Didn't see that one coming. That's no the first one? time she's no. been on the show, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? And I like that she's apparently around somewhere. She, she is around. Yeah, she's she's going around. on a spirit journey. Well, one of the things Talk can't th die. The blind bandit will never die. Well, one of the things that I really like about this season is I feel like they're they're laying a lot of groundwork and expanding the world so that they can extend the show past three seasons so I that hope it maybe so. can last like five to six. I and need I also, to know. Yeah, I also feel like there was probably a decision made that was like, look, we can't, we don't want, we want this show to be able to stand on its own away from our Airbender. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna, you're not gonna see Lord Zuko, you're not gonna see Toph, and now three seasons in, they're like, okay. And yeah. we, we, people have accepted the show, they yes. know that it's a different animal, and now we can start bringing these people back without people just saying, I want more of the old show. And yeah. I learned that apparently Zuko isn't Fire Lord right now, it's his daughter? Or is that some hearsay Maybe. I caught on? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that was a tweet that we got uh, since last week's episode. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I don't care. I just like seeing him. <laughs> I yeah. do like seeing him as well. He's my, he my favorite character of the old uh, show. And I, I was so wrong. In this episode, I was looking at uh, Bay Fong and I was like, maybe she got that scar from a dragon. Like a dragon just went. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No. And then minutes out. later, I was well, like, well, oh, no. at Tierton uh, writes, it, it was really great to see how Lynn got her scar. And uh, I, I thought that that was awesome too. The fact that it was given to her as she was trying to arrest her sister. Yeah. That they had this this 
falling out that Ooh. Toph had to resolve. Ooh, a deep theme in the Avatar universe. Your deepest scars are given to you by your family. Ooh. That's actually a good I'd point because I don't life. know if you uh, know this, Matt, but Zuko's scar was given to him by his dad. Yes, yes. I was so aware of that. it's kind of a touching... I did, I did like... Um, the situation that led to the scar, the actual event itself, I thought was kind of weak. Well, just because like Lynn totally could have stopped that wire yeah, before it, was it an hit her in the face. Like, I don't know. The other, the only other part, I loved both these episodes. The only other weak part, I didn't really see the need for uh, Lynn to like storm off and stop the acupuncture just to come back after the break. Yeah, like I think maybe uh, she could have just stayed. She could have. <laughs> just saying, I, maybe she could have like thrown her fit and then like started it over again. I think that I think that was real. That's for her personality. That made sense. Yeah, yeah. it made sense um, to me. At Wani Cash feels like you guys. It was interesting to see how Lynn got her scars from her sister. It reminded me of Zuko's story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. It, kind of nice having that symmetry. And their earth bending fight was the coolest. Yeah, it, it was. was so good. Yeah. I also like how uh, if you think about it, they didn't make a point of it in the show. But if you think about it, the only reason Lynn didn't completely whoop her sister's ass is because she was sick. Like, yeah. she was really she was feeling really up. sick. Yeah. But she oh, was still yeah. able to yeah. hold yeah. her own. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, it was some cool stuff in there. I wouldn't say it's the best earthbending I've seen. Well, I mean, but... you've seen more than me. But yeah. I really yeah. like, I like metal bender on metal bender action. And the mm. fact that it was so emotionally that's the first charged. Time, actually, yeah. 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 And I think that's another good point. I think great action sequences have a deep emotional core, and this had that. Where mm -hmm. you're like it really sure interested did. to see how yeah. this resolves. Because yeah. we did want we were rooting for both parties. It wasn't just one person we wanted exactly. to Exactly. They no. both had active grievances. You yes. gotta go back and see Toph versus the Boulder in season two. That's some good earth right okay. there. Okay. I'm excited. That's some good um you know but also yeah, but you're right, because they, they, the show made a good point about uh, Lynn's, Lynn's reasoning behind her grievance is legit, but she should have also let it go years ago. Like when Su Yin's like, me and mom talked this out a couple years back. You're like, oh, Lynn's kind of wrong. And that's mm -hmm. that's such an adult idea yeah. for a kid's show, essentially. They don't talk things yeah. out. Yeah, and <laughs> they don't talk things kids out. don't know how to talk things out. She said it's been 30 years. Yeah. She didn't talk to her sister for 30 years. Mm -mm. People change. That, People change in one year. But that's the <laughs> thing is that happens in real yeah. life. It's know? true. And I, what I love about this the, is that ultimately Lynn uh, lets it go. She's able to leave it all behind mm -hmm. her, and they reach an uneasy Truth. That reveal to peaceful Lynn was yeah. great. It was just great. It was like, Lynn. whoa, who is and this? It, and it she makes sense that Lynn, Yeah, she yeah. just needed to fight it out. That's yeah. how Lynn would resolve things. Yeah. She doesn't talk. Both. She needs to beat the shit out of something. Mm -hmm. And then I, there's this moment where it's kind of like, oh, they're both not coming off great here. Then Bolan has that great line of like, you don't have siblings. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you need have to, to, fight, it you have to fight. fight it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other big takeaways from this episode now, uh, Korra knows how to metal bend. Yes. She's so, the first metal bending avatar. First metal bending avatar. I can't avatar. believe that. Ang, what were you doing for like <laughs> 60 years? <laughs> Oh, no, nah, no space. Not, not he's metal building banding. a city not and banding. bringing peace to the world and balance or whatever. Not metal building. I mean, he's the first. A, a, a avatar with an air scooter, I yeah. guess. That's, poor, that's cool. poor Bolin, he wants to air bend, but he, he I mean, or metal bend, bend sorry, yeah. but he, think, he. You think he'll be able to? Yeah, I'm starting Eventually. to get into Will's camp of, I'm not sure that I like that everybody can metal yeah, bend. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like luckily they the said it's only one in a hundred about that can metal that's bend. That's true. Yeah, so. The other interesting thing about both these episodes, it was really interesting to have two episodes that, that spent a lot of energy focusing on the adults learning lessons. Mm-hmm. That's you know, true. The, the adults are the ones that need to like pick up because this one, Tenzin, still trying to. Tenzin learned how to be a better father and a better teacher to Korra, but learning how to teach other Airbenders was probably something that was never on his docket. Yeah, it's like something I'm never, I'm never gonna have to worry about teaching other Airbenders other than my right. kids. Right, and and I think also on that level, there was a lot of guilt that he's been putting on himself for years for kind of failing his father and failing the Air Nation, and now all of a sudden he has this opportunity and he's wholly unprepared for it because his father never taught him how to teach Airbenders. Yeah, because again, it wasn't a skill that they right. thought was going to be necessary at any point. In exactly, history. you know, and you look at his kids. I mean, Jinora's great, but like. Like, you know, like the other two are yeah. not exactly, they're kind of unruly. Uh, the um, littlest one, I can't remember his name. Milo? He's Milo. Milo, he's hilarious. He's hilarious. Yeah. Um, uh, he, at Hippie like Sloth. It sounds like he's voiced by a real child. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he yeah. is. At Hippie Sloth writes, uh, character development. Lin, Su Yin, Tenzin, and Boomy being actual believable siblings. I feel mm -hmm. like Avatar The Last Airbender is back. Yeah, and I also like that just because we love these characters before does not make them perfect parents in the future. Mm. Agreed. Toph apparently kind of sucked as a mom. Oh, which, yes. which, for somebody that's watching, oh, yes. saying, makes sense. Makes sense. She, she wasn't built to be a mom. Why did she have kids in the first place? <laughs> right? Yeah. But, um, and then even with, with like Tenzin and Boomy, like their personalities are so different. And mm -hmm. especially now, Tenzin has to teach Boomy. Yeah. 
And he's and not exactly the most he's, No, guy. and and you know, Boomy doesn't ever want to listen to Tenzin. He's so used to, you know, taking the piss and like, you know, making his brother look like a fool. Kura has this great idea to uh, get Boomy to take more responsibility for helping to train the other airbenders, and Tenzin takes it a little too far. Yeah. Instead of having Boomy help him out and and take more of this responsibility, he instead takes Boomy at his word that they need more yes. discipline and goes way too far with mm. it. Yeah, Tenzin's a very uh, uh, all or nothing yeah. guy. It's one of those very like not not, not let's not take Tenzin's ideas or Boomy's ideas and re reassociate them with my methods. It's like nope. All or nothing, and I think Korra's premise is sound. If she, if Janora and Boomy were helping Tenzin, you'd have a pretty good between the three of them. Mm -hmm. You'd have your bases covered. Agreed. Oh man! Yeah. And now we're starting to talk about Janora getting um, tattoos. Yeah. How does that work? Is she gonna have to shave? Oh, can I tell you my favorite piece of animation in these episodes? Do it. Bald guy. When Bald he yeah, feels when it, he feels it, that's and it's so wrinkles. great. Yeah. And, and then he turns and blap. Yeah, because one of the best, the, one of the best jokes was one of those like, you can choose whether you get shaved or not. Wait. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I had a choice? I had a choice? And what then, the hell? And then the justification for it, it was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'd want to get shaved too, man. That totally mm -hmm. saved I'm so spot. glad yeah. you did. I'm so glad. My, my, I think what they're going to have to do to get Janora to shave her head is like, because for the airbending women, they don't shave their entire head. It only mm -hmm. goes about to right here, as you can see, like with the past female oh, avatar. Okay. I think like it's going to be at the end of the season, and you know how there's a time at the end between the next, next season and next. season, like, oh, my hair grew back a little bit, but I do still have, have it. the tattoo. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that would make sense. That'd be a good way to do it. Because I loved his very dad way of like, I promise I'll think about it. Yeah. yeah. And that if we're a kid, like, that's a victory. Like, yes! A lot of people were very into all the flying bison this week, all the baby oh. bison. Uh, at Steffi Weffy writes, you know, the baby bison are so freaking cute. Does anything else matter? No. Well, uh, no. I think what kind of matters was, matter. was maybe the subtle way that they told the adults in the audience that uh, that guy had killed at least one yeah. and yeah. used it as a cake. He killed one and used it as a cake. Yeah. And that, it was one of those, like, oh, man, he killed a bison. And then you see the size difference. You're like, that's a baby bison cape. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, Steffi Weffy also writes, I was so offended by the bison hunter's use of a bison tail as a fashion accessory, I actually cried. And another person, hold on. We gotta admit, though, it would be really expensive in the Avatar world to get a bison cape. That's yeah. like 5000 uh, bucks. At Suckerfish Dave Ooh. writes, the bison poacher was the most evil thing I've seen in the Avatar universe by far. Air bison cape? Douchebag. Well, and baby bison cake. They never really, uh, they only insinuate murder, really, so we can see that this dude's a straight up murderer. Yeah. He is mm -hmm. gutted. Yeah. A bison. Oh. And again, this show, uh, uh, Cora, so fluffy. I guess a, a, a good example <laughs> of what this show does is kind of Harry Potter, how it grew with its audience. Yeah. Cora's mm -hmm. kind of grown with its audience because it's touching on, like, that's a real thing in the real world. People Poacher, kill, people poachers murder. kill animals and wear them, and that's a part, and that's, it's a great way to, like, you love those baby bison? Well, that happens to real animals, it does. And so you might not want to be now. We now down kids can care about it. You want to eat veal animals. now, huh? You want to eat veal now. Uh, I like how uh, the guy insinuated that the Earth Queen ate uh, her father's bear. Bear, oh, the bear. only animal in the entire original series that is just a, a single animal. A single animal is a bear. Yeah, and she probably and ate she him. probably ate it. Yeah. Dang it, She's man. such a bitch. Ba Sing Se is a terrible it's place. It's always been. It's always been. When again, that was another thing I really enjoyed about the original show is that like, oh, the firebenders are the bad guys. But as the show progresses, you realize that too. there's earthbenders that are bad guys. Because mm -hmm. Ba Sing Se has always been sketch. You mentioned that last mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. And then you find earthbenders, like the avatar before Aang was a firebender. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not, there are, isn't black and white. These guys are bad. These guys are good. It depends on your it, whole spectrum. On mm -hmm. that, like I was thinking about that too, how like in my opinion, when the waterbenders are the bad guy, it's way worse. They are the most dangerous in my eyes. Really? Yeah, the chick with no arms that is with the that yeah. I don't know. I'm Zaheer, terrified of her. I don't know. Zaheer, that if I had any complaint, I think these episodes were wonderfully constructed. They were beautiful episodes. They were great television. As a personal fan, I need more of the bad guy. I need to know what's going on with them. I need to find out what they're mm. doing. Every mm -hmm. time they're on screen, they're the most interesting thing to yeah. me this season, uh, especially as here. At Book Brigadier writes, Team Avatar versus the four benders. Can't wait to see what they want. How did Zaheer discover Korra's location? I want to know oh, that yeah, too. He, he found How does he know way. that she's in the metal type, city? He has I, some type of connection. I think he was, I think he's spirit projecting. He's, he's, no way. he's clipping through oh, it so he's quick. so good. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if he has a history, because he, he keeps quoting airbending stuff. I wonder if he had a history of studying their culture. Ooh. He might just be really well read. He might know as much about all the other cultures as well. Because mm -hmm. because Tenzin seems to apply the more you know about airbending yep. culture, the quicker you're 
going to pick it up. Nah, and nah, he's, nah, man. he's clipping through yeah. quick. We and burn all the airbender books, all right? That's my plan. We <laughs> no, burned out we all attempts. Don't, don't, don't burn out. All right, we, <laughs> don't burn any we books. We already played that game. Uh, didn't at G Boostre yeah. uh, writes, don't fuck with that no arms, bitch. She's a bad I didn't even notice until you pointed out to me. Yeah. And I was watching the episode. I was like, is our arms behind her? And you're like, she has no arms. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. That's why she has water arms. Which yeah. are cool. And like, explodey third eye ladies. She made one She made one a knife and held it against the dude's appendix. Yeah. I was like, you dying. She's like, like the Terminator, like from Terminator yes. 2, she's the T-1000. Uh, so is the uh, Glaive guy, is he just officially like a lava bender? He's a lava bender. He superheats Earth. He's because an Earth bender who superheats Earth. Is it like and, you compress uh, it? You, yeah. He's, is he going to make a diamond? I like that. That's how you get rich. Right, like a diamond. That's how you get rich. I like that. That it's one of those like you in last season where she basically fights the embodiment of all evil and mm -hmm. you're like, how do you top it? These guys kind of top it. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, yeah. They're scary well, that's shit. the thing is like, you know, you can have the embodiment of all evil or you can have four really compelling human threats. That's true. These four dudes could have taken Vatu. They could have taken Probably. Him. Probably. Yeah. They're like, oh, just the Especially embodiment of evil. You think they could have taken Rava? No one can take Rava. Rava lives within me, by the way. Didn't Vatu take Rava? Rava's Vatu like dead, kinda right? took Rava. He had help. He had help. Zahir actually probably would make a better avatar than Korra would. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Now, Sorry. Now no. that I know that Henry Rollins' voice is Zahir, I can take him not seriously at all. Really? <laughs> yeah. That makes it better Far for me. Far less seriously. I'm, I'm, I, that makes it so much better for me. Henry Rollins is the lead singer of Black Flag, yep. and he's now he's like a DJ and like a. He's a, he's uh, a spoken. I prefer to think yeah. of him as a spoken word artist now. That's right. my reference for okay. Kurt Henry Rollins. And NPR. I gotta is my say, reference. I gotta say that uh, uh, shaved heads of here fits. Yes. Rollins' voice better, <laughs> Far better. than like uh, scraggly old man looking here. Agreed. You guys really are so right, though. Well. If he can master airbending in a cave, yeah. I mean, inside a hole, and she can't do it yeah. uh, over she, time. Yeah, she's still trying to figure it right. out. Uh, yeah. He might like be a better, better avatar. He'd be a good bender. Oh, I was going to say, but he also has a spiritual connection, too. Yeah, yeah. if yeah. he He's just scary, switched man. his game up. That's, I need dangerous. to see more of them. I need to know why they tried to kidnap Korra, because they're just so fascinating. Because they wanted to kidnap her years ago. They yeah. tried years ago. You will get to see more of Zaheer when Tenzin beats the crap out of him. <laughs> Tenzin gives him the T bone. He's gonna give him the T bone. Is that a special move? That's a special move. He makes an yeah. air T, yeah. and, and, and just when he's running, he T bones him. Right. That's like. Folks, thank you so much for watching the TV show show here on Legend of Korra. Please make sure to tweet at us using the hashtag TV show show next weekend after it airs Friday night. I'm Matt Lieberman. I'm William Haynes. I'm DJ Wilder. <laughs> See ya.